In less than a week, on April 14th, the top uncommitted quarterback in the class, Hussan Longstreet, is set to make his college decision. We will bring on our friend Tom Loy in just a second to preview that decision. But Blair, before we bring him on, I got to ask you, he is a prospect, not far from you in California. I did use the map. Corona is not far from you. So from what you've seen from him, what type of skill set does the number five quarterback in the class have? A skill set that's good enough for other programs to tell other top 100 quarterbacks that they're waiting on Houston Longstreet to make a decision. You know, he's a dynamic passer. He's great outside the pocket. I love what he's able to do pre-snap and recognizing where he's going to go with the football. He escapes pressure. He's able to buy himself extra time. He's one of the better Inland Empire quarterbacks that we've seen since the likes of Jaden Daniels and C.J. Stroud. So he's in that same air among the, the quarterbacks from Southern California um, that are not from the Trinity League, which is obviously the best league in, in high school football. We love his arm talent. We, he, we just saw him a couple weeks ago at the Elite 11 Los Angeles where he was the alpha and, and punched his ticket to the Elite 11 final. So he's not just a great athlete, but he's a great passer and, and he's getting ready to come off the board. And, and Emily, he's going to be leading off our War Daddy series. It's, it's making a comeback this week. I know we've been waiting. We've been anticipating. So the readers over at 24-7 Sports, make sure you stay locked into the website for the kickoff of the War Daddy series, a closer look at the recruitment of Hussan Longstreet. My personal favorite series. So that is fantastic news to hear, Blair. Yeah, he is the number one player in the state of California, number five quarterback and 28th ranked overall player. And right now, Texas A&M leads with three total crystal balls, but he is also considering Auburn, Ole Miss, and Oregon. Let's bring on national recruiting analyst Tom Loy to help us break down this decision. And we're going to go school by school. So all of those programs will be well represented. Uh, let's start with Auburn. What's the latest with Longstreet and the Tigers? Yeah, before we get into Auburn, let me just say, like, this recruitment has gotten way more wild than I expected. Really? Um, I'm honestly not sure um, anything should surprise me in this day and age of the recruiting. But, you know, here we are. Um, regarding Auburn, I was told the initial plan was to shut it down, make a decision on April 14th. And that was before he ever stepped foot on Auburn's campus again. But then it all changed. Um, he took visits to AM, Ole Miss, Oregon, and Auburn. And there's a strong feeling inside the Auburn building that this recent visit was a game changer. Um, there's some people in that office that actually believe this trip was a, a needle mover, and the Tigers are currently on top less than a week from his commitment announcement. So it's not necessarily my opinion, my take, but that's the feeling inside that building. Well, Tom, and this is a team that probably needs him the most among these final four. Let's be real. Auburn in the SEC last year was last in the conference in passing. So Hugh Freeze is starting off in, in you know, in a way at the bottom, at, at the basement from a, a quarterback position standpoint. Uh, they did bring in Walker White in the, the previous recruiting class. And, and I think Auburn, obviously, the only way for them to go is up. And a player like Houston Longstreet, if you're at him to the quarterback room, makes you more dynamic, makes you more explosive. That competition in the spring of 2025 would be one of the more intriguing ones for us to monitor for sure. Blair, you could even argue that they could use him right now headed into this upcoming season. That is the, the Auburn quarterback situation, uh, but they will have to wait and they will have to compete against the other schools who want a piece of him, including Ole Miss. Uh, so where do things stand with the Rebels, Tom? Ole Miss is an intriguing option. I know you just used that word for Auburn, Blair, but <laughs> Ole Miss is intriguing, in my opinion. Um, on paper, it seems like a, the pairing of Longstreet and head coach Lane Kiffin would be outstanding. Uh, the Rebel staff believes they had a great visit. They believe they have a shot. But there isn't a ton of confidence or optimism coming from sources connected to Ole Miss uh, that they're going to eventually be the landing spot for Longstreet. And if they miss on Longstreet, we talked about it last week on the show with Andrew Ivins and Cooper Patagna. I just don't know exactly where they're going to go. Um, there's a lot of options out there, but, and, and obviously we all know he loves, Kiffin loves the transfer portal. So if Ole Miss can't get it done with Longstreet, they obviously could get Deuce Knight, the Notre Dame quarterback commit. He's clearly a top target for him, but Ole Miss would really love to get Longstreet. Yeah, Lane Kiffin, one of the most creative, if if not the most creative play caller in college football. Tom, I know you're a big fan of the play call sheet toss-ups, 20 yards up in, in the field. I think Houston Longstreet would be a player that would make Lane Kiffin throw out his arm. He might need Tommy John surgery 
considering all the playmaking ability he would make in the SEC. I, I think this is a phenomenal fit, maybe the best fit in, in the, the top four group that we're seeing here, considering what he's able to do with a player like Jackson Dart over the last couple of years, uh, attracting the quarterback talent that Lane Kiffin has. Kunsal Longstreet in a Lane Kiffin offense in the SEC. I mean, sign me up for that for, for that team in, in dynasty mode over in Colton, that, that new college football game. <laughs> Well, neither Auburn or Ole Miss have a quarterback committed in this class, but the next school I'm going to ask about Oregon actually does, Akili Smith Jr. And overall, Tom, I mean, they feel kind of like the outlier geographically, but where is Dan Lanning and company in this race? Yeah, as you mentioned, Oregon does already have a quarterback commit in Akili Smith Jr., top 100 talent, but that hasn't stopped them from continuing to recruit multiple quarterbacks uh, and pushing hard for quarterbacks across the country. So Longstreet's been the top target for the Ducks for quite some time. Um, there's even been some chatter that they're recruiting Texas quarterback commit K.J. Lacey, TCU commit Ty Hawkins, just to name a few. But Longstreet's always been the priority, the guy for Oregon. So that said, like with Ole Miss, talking to some people as of this afternoon, this morning, there just doesn't seem to be a ton of confidence coming from them regarding their chances at landing the coveted target. target. But I do think that they're going to continue recruiting the position. They're going to push for other guys. We'll see what happens. I feel like they need to be going all in for guys like Keelan Russell. I already mentioned Lacey and Hawkins. So they're not going to slow down anytime soon. They want they want competition in that room, and uh, they're going to do all they can to land to this cycle. Yeah, and think about what they did in the previous cycle. And the first true one for Will Stein, the offensive coordinator there at Oregon, they had two quarterbacks committed for basically the entire cycle. They ended up losing one. They only bring in Luke Moga, who's already on campus and a part of that quarterback room. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Hussan Longstreet gives them that dynamic weapon if you were to go there. The type of quarterback that we've been accustomed to seeing at, at Oregon. Uh, I, I think a better and a more refined Bo Nix type who can move the chains with a stronger arm and a better runner who can extend plays. Uh, I'd be really, really interested to see what he looks like in, in the Big Ten. Obviously, this is, looks like an SEC battle right now, but Hussan Longstreet in the Big Ten would, would also you know open up a lot of eyes. More SEC team to talk about. Uh, the presumed leader in the clubhouse, Texas A&M. Tom, how big is the gap between the Aggies and everybody we just talked about? Early on, the buzz was all Texas A&M. I probably could have and should have thrown in a 24-7 sports crystal ball pick for the Aggies immediately after I spoke with Longstreet for the first time back in January. Uh, the Aggies were doing and continue to do an excellent job with them. Mike Elko, Colin Klein, the entire staff has laid everything out, pushed all the right buttons, and have long been considered the front runner. But as of today, at least according to sources close to the situation, as, and like I said earlier, like talking to guys this afternoon, I still like Texas A&M to get this one done. I believe that a pick to another school would probably shock and surprise the staff in College Station. Um, in all honesty, I could see this one working out for the Aggies. I think they get this done, and USC fans are not going to like me for this which they already don't love me at all for I'm covering Notre Dame. But I could honestly see Auburn potentially playing spoiler to both Georgia and USC as it relates to current Trojans quarterback commit Julian Lewis. So in a perfect world for USC fans, as it relates to Lewis, uh, Auburn pulls off the up there was the perceived upset and lands Longstreet. And it's just something to keep an eye on. So keep an eye on uh, Lewis potentially landing elsewhere. We love the hypothetical, hypothetical dominoes, uh, Tom. That's, that's uh you know you're you're big braining us right now that i mean that's that's really interesting because i just spoke to a quarterback this past weekend another top 24/7 prospect not named Keelan Russell who told me yeah there's a bunch of schools that are kind of contact me but they want to know what's going to happen with, with Hussan Longstreet so although he's the number 5 quarterback in this class He's being the top uncommitted player right now at that position. He has a lot of leverage, and a lot of the schools are waiting to see what the next move is going to be. So those dominoes are, are always going to be tumbling. Although we don't know what the AM offense will look like under first year offensive coordinator Colin Klein, we obviously have an understanding of what that looked like at, at Kansas State. And they averaged over 80 yards more during those two seasons that he was at K-State than they did before he took over as OC. So he brings a, a lot of quarterback dynamic uh, looks. He loves a, a runner. He loves a guy that can move the chains with his feet. Uh, he, he, he's got the big playability. And I think A&M, with everything they're doing on the recruiting front, if they land a Hussan Longstreet to lead the charge at quarterback, 
I mean, they could take that next step under Coach Elko. I love these really tight recruiting battles in April because I'm sure that when April 14th hits and he makes his decision, all the schools that lose out are just going to quit and they're not going to continue to be in contact with him. Uh, it'll be a very interesting recruitment going forward, Tom. Thank you so much for breaking that down. Um, but anytime that you come on, Blair mentioned it, big brain. We got a lot of questions for you. So we got a viewer question here from a Ken W asking, you recently logged a crystal ball pick for top 247 offensive lineman, Justin Hausenhoodle. I hope I got that right. If I did not, I had a lot of fun saying it. Um, he's out of Georgia. You have him to land with Georgia Tech. So what makes you feel so confident about the Yellow Jackets here? Well, as it relates to just connecting with the kid and really making him a priority, I think that Georgia Tech is doing a phenomenal job. I really like what they're doing. Offensive line coach Jeep Wade has led the way. And at least from what I've gathered, the, the staff is simply out recruiting everybody, um, any any other top contender for him. So um, no question, there's other schools that are doing a good job. You got North Carolina, Clemson, USC, and a few others. But uh, And one other note that, you know, Hasenhodel was injured and he suffered a knee injury and it was pretty bad. But from what I'm told, Georgia Tech didn't bat an eye and that carried a ton of weight for him and his family. So they continue to show love, continue to make him feel wanted. And they kept pushing for his commitment. So I feel great about my crystal ball pick for Georgia Tech. And I could get I could see it getting done sooner rather than later. All right. This next one comes from an Aaron G asking top two, four, seven offensive tackle. Cardi Smith is set to commit this week. So what can you tell us as he's set to make his decision? This one's also been pretty interesting to follow. Um, been, been going back and forth between a couple top contenders. You could throw Auburn, Mississippi State. Uh, pretty much that's the top two, in my opinion. I think you can call Florida State somewhat of a sleeper. They absolutely think they have a shot. But um, and to take it a step further, I think all of the schools in his top group are doing a good job and feel somewhat optimistic. But I think in the end, it's going to come down to the Tigers and the Bulldogs. Uh, but as of today, uh, if I had to make a pick, I'm leaning towards Auburn. I think the Tigers, Hugh Freeze, I think they get the job done. But look for something to come down uh, potentially as early as Wednesday.